John Doe's back was killing him. He tried to keep up with his customary five-mile run that morning, but just couldn't do it. He was bummed out and fed up. I'm only 35, he said to himself, and I haven't done anything except moving those boxes last night. Why am I feeling like a 90-year-old man? He did some research online and discovered that his symptoms lined up with those of a herniated disc. It was time to go have an MRI of his back. He knew he needed a referral for that study, so he made an appointment to see his primary care doctor the next day. John showed up at Dr. Smith's office, iPad in hand, primed with research, everything from the Mayo Clinic to his community message board, ready to share the next steps with Dr. Smith. At the appointment, Dr. Smith examined John and took detailed notes about his history. Even though she was only allotted 15 minutes for the appointment, she knew it was important to look online at the American College of Radiology's appropriateness criteria to guide her decision-making on the next best step to uncover the reason for John's back pain. She heard him say that he wanted an MRI, and as a proponent of shared decision-making with her patients, she wanted to be sure she had the evidence available when she tried to explain to John why the expensive test was unnecessary. While Dr. Smith was conducting this search, John kept pointing to the article he had found online that suggested an MRI was the best way to diagnose the herniated disc he was convinced he had. John was clearly getting frustrated and Dr. Smith began to feel pressured to make a decision. Dr. Smith ran out of time with patients queuing up in the next room and felt ill-equipped to present evidence-based information to John. John wasn't even thinking about the possible high copay and Dr. Smith wasn't comfortable advising him about cost because she hadn't yet completed her review of the evidence. Neither one of them was armed with the cost-benefit information including coverage, deductible, co-pays, and approved sites in the network. All John knew was that his back hurt and he wanted to get back to work. Couldn't Dr. Smith just write the order already? Under escalating pressure, Dr. Smith abandoned her search for guidelines and decided to follow what she thinks is the safest approach. John gets his MRI. Dr. Smith gets the report from the radiology practice and contacts John to let him know the results are negative. John tells her the pain is still occurring. Dr. Smith then prescribes the conservative treatment she hoped John would agree to in the first place. Both John and Dr. Smith are left with a bad taste in their mouths about the clinical encounter. Dr. Smith is disappointed that she wasn't able to provide the evidence-based care that John deserved. And John still doesn't understand why he isn't feeling well. What's more, he now has a hefty out-of-pocket expense to pay.